Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at Speedway Signature Event, checking in 100A Juggernauts, an incredible team, already Signature Event win back at uh, Minnesota Signature Event, so congratulations on that. Another event win coming into this, and looking to be one of the dominant teams here at the Indiana uh, Speedway Event as well, too. They made uh, quite a few changes from Mall, so if you haven't seen them since then, we'll definitely be overviewing what goes through. But I think something really cool we'll be talking about is their drivetrain, and we're actually gonna be doing a live hot swap to show how quickly this team's able to swap their motors out and get ready for the next match. So, so much to learn from Juggle last year and their awesome performance coming up on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Okay, let's start off with your uh, intake for your team. Talk to me about, uh, you know, of course, what you have there, and then I'd lo love to hear as we go through any changes you made from all coming in. Uh, yeah, so for our intake, the front stage and uh, backstage are separate, which is what we really like. That was one of the things we had at Mall that we switched afterwards, but we've now gone back to because it just makes it really easy for maybe putting on the, putting up a high stake when we lift up our, our mech, it'll get one stuck in there, but we can control a second one with the front stage and just like keep it spinning and keep it in so we can back up without it falling out. And it's a hook intake. so. You just pull it through here, flip it over. And one of the nice things we've added recently is the flex wheels up here. It just keeps it really secure and consistent over the top. Yeah, your consistency has just been so good on the field. So cool to see those changes. And actually reverting back, I think it's kind of an interesting thing too. Uh, Corey on here uh, with your uh, Lady Brown that you've been running as well too. Love to hear about, uh, once again, the changes you've been doing for that. And, and anything, maybe future plans you're looking at doing uh, with this too. Yeah, yeah, of course. So um, at Mall, we did not have the Lady Brown mech, which is kind of what, I mean, I think it allowed us to win at Mall, but it also kind of hindered us because we were able to focus just on the Mogos, which helped a lot at Mall, but then we also weren't able to score high stakes. In yeah, case and the meta's changed so much, Yeah, right? it's changed so much here yeah. at Speedway. So now we, this is our second competition with this uh, Lady Brown mech. It's just a simple Lady Brown mech, so we, it has three stages. It starts, it can start down, and now we can uh, score under a Mogo, and then we have a second stage right here that starts right where it can load into the, load the ring. And then our last stage, you want to catch it, that goes up onto there. So that's really nice in our, our program. We're able to just set different states so we don't have to move it up and down and set it to the perfect spot. So that helps really fast so we can do that. And also, a thing that we have differently than some other teams, we have cut flex wheels in here. So we can stick our, it's a tiny bit. We can stick the ring in here and it's really not going anywhere because those flex wheels are so sticky that those, the rings are just super, super stuck in there so we can put it on the uh, the post and they just start moving around. Has uh, Juggernauts considered looking at going to holding two rings uh, in the Lady Brown at some point? Yeah, when, when we were first building Lady Brown, we were definitely considered um, considering building that mech and having ho holding two, because that's one thing that the redirect mechs can do that Lady Browns can't, at least easily, is they can easily put in two and score them on there. So we've considered just stacking up one of these, like another holder, but high rings have really not came into huge play yet, even at Speedway here. So. We're able to do one fast, and the thing that we do to kind of substitute for that is we have one here, and like Caden said, we have the two-stage intake. So the bottom one is still spinning. We can put that in there, and then put this up, put it on there, hold on the one, and that's fast. So it's not technically as fast as having two rings in there, but it's still super fast. Yeah, it's still pretty fast, I think. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, Kevin, talk to me about the uh, passive hangback. Your team has been so clutch with this uh, so far. Uh, just work me through and walk me through what you're doing. Yeah, so a hang is only three points this year, which uh, high stakes are a big play at the end, but also if you your hang, it's also important. So we wanted to keep the robot very light, and to do this, we made a passive hang. We have these two, um, these two right here, and this uh, piston will retract, releasing this over here and this will just stop the Lady Brown mech. So right when we go into the uh, hang, it'll, it'll just hang very easily. Super, super lightweight, just one, pist just one piston, and uh, works very consistently. Another thing to, that helps us is these um, anti-tip wheels. 
these very free spinning. So when we go up to tip, if our robot tips, this just levels it back out and works really well. Corey, as we wrap up here, I think uh, one of the cool things we're going to do is that your team, as we were talking earlier, is running you know 55 watt motor drivetrain, which is a little less than some of the other teams that we talked to on here. Uh, but your team has kind of found a way to uh, figure out if your motor, motor's overheat to get it ready for the next match. So talk to me more about what you're doing, and I think we're going to get a great demo here yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, of course. So the six motor drive has kind of became the meta in like almost all the good teams now. But we really wanted to have our two motor intake like we had at Mall. It worked super well. We tried doing the. Uh, one motor intake in our at a local competition, which it worked, but it just wasn't as consistent as we had at Mall. So we went back to our two motor intake, but now we have one more motor that we need to get rid of. So this is where we went into the uh, the five motor drive or the 55 watt drivetrain. So we have a 40, uh, 450 RPM drive, and we have, as you can see, these 11 watt motors, four of them, and then two 5.5 watt motors. And they're all rubber banded, so you can take them out and hot swap them. Um, they do get hot after a few matches, but we, sw we swap them before every match and like even before practices so we can make sure they're cool and ready to go. So I'll show you swapping one of these. And just like that, that's one motor that we do. Um, just like that, we do we do six of those, and then we have a whole brand new um, drivetrain. It did take a little bit of tuning to make sure we had the right motors to make sure that uh, it still drives straight, because some motors act differently than others. So after a few trial and error of those, our, our drivetrain works great. It's fresh between every match, and it accelerates just fine. As it, like Some people say that the five motor drive won't accelerate as well, but we've tested it enough. We've really reduced the weight in all the ways that we can, so the 55 watt drivetrain works well and yeah it's, it's worked really well for us here i just gotta ask you real quick out here is the only thing holding us in these rubber bands it is the only thing holding them in but also i mean the rubber bands are holding them close to it but there's some grip inside the inside of the motors that like it won't it's not going anywhere inside of here oh, that's so. just totally wild man like yeah. that's so cool we've thought about zip tying them but like that just takes i mean that takes a whole lot more time and we haven't had any problem with them falling out or anything so all right well juggernaut's probably in the rubber band meta so we can't wait to see how <laughs> uh you know other teams implement that as well too but really appreciate you guys taking time by the way uh, all the cool stuff that you guys do if you haven't had a chance to see the speedway opening ceremonies and all the great stuff you all do with that what an inspiration your team has been to the community, both robot-wise, and I think just as a team in general as well, too. A lot to take off of this. So good luck here at Speedway. We'll, of course, be seeing you at the World Championship already, so we're excited for that, and good luck the rest of the way, guys. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.